the box type in gym is useful for defining the agent's action space and the environment's observation space. We can specify a lower bound, a upper bound, the shape to be returned, and the data type. Let's see some examples. Here I'm returning a 1D vector of integer type between negative 2 and 2. If I want a two element vector, I can change the shape. Because the type here is integer, we know that there are five possible values from negative two to zero to two. But usually the box type is used with a float. In this case, there are infinite possibilities. It could be any floating point number between negative two and two. We can also create a multi-dimensional shape. Again, usually a float is used, but for this demo to make the numbers easier to see, let me switch it back to a integer. Let me change this back to a two element vector. It is possible to control the boundaries of each one of these elements. We just need to turn this into an array. Let's say I want to keep my first element between negative two and two, and my second element between 10 and 15. You can see that the first element is still between negative 2 and 2, and the second one is between 10 and 15. We can make a more complicated shape, for example, a 2 by 3, but we have to make the arrays in those bounds match as well. If we don't, we'll get a shape mismatch error. So the shape being 2 by 3, I need to transform my array into a 2 by 3 as well. Let me rearrange this to make it easier to see. So my number here on the top left is bounded by negative two to two. My second number, 13, is bounded by this 10 to 15. 24 is bounded by 20 to 25. Bottom left, negative one is bounded by negative two to two, and so on. So we can make the bottom ones different, of course. There we go. Now, if everything in the factor shares the same lower bound, for example, everything has a lower bound of zero, you can just do this and the box type will automatically do a Cartesian product between zero and your higher way. Of course, you can do the opposite if your high bound is the same for all the numbers. If one of your elements is unbounded, let's say this one, you can pass in infinity, but you can't use the integer data type. You have to use the float data type. But usually you would use this to validate the observation space rather than sampling from it, because if you try to sample from it, you're not going to get a huge number. If your lower bound is also unbounded, you can use negative infinity. But again, you would not be sampling something with infinity in it. Okay, I hope this is helpful for you to understand how the box type works.